If I could only choose one tool for snow removal, guess what I would pick? You got it, a snow pusher. So we're gonna give you all the popular options for snow removal today. I'm gonna tell you why I think a snow pusher is the best value, the most versatile piece of equipment out there to move your snow. And I've got a hunch we're not all gonna agree. So now's your chance, leave a comment down below prove me wrong. Hey, we try to keep it fun, entertaining, educational. If you enjoy these videos, hit subscribe to see more. And guess what? We sell tractor attachments, ship them all over the country. So if you need something for your tractor or your skid steer, we can help visit goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so I thought it was an appropriate time. The snow has fallen. Not enough to push yet, thankfully, but we're getting our pusher set up on our tractors. So we're out at our property, have about an 1800 foot driveway to manage this winter. Gonna use the Kubota M4D 071 with a 3500 series HLA snow pusher. So we'll get into more detail about how to pick the right snow pusher for you a little bit later on, but let's go through the options. You may have a couple tools in your bag already that can handle snow removal. There's gonna be pros and cons to a little bit of everything. Let's start from the cheapest and work our way up. All right, so we're talking about tractors. I'm gonna make the bold assumption that you guys have a front end loader on your tractor. So we're gonna go with that assumption and run with it, but given that, I think it's pretty obvious, pretty clear that a bucket is gonna be the most economical way for you to push snow, at least at face value. Now, I have some pretty strong opinions on using a bucket to push snow, and I made a whole video about that last winter. Check it out if you want to. It's definitely gonna do the job, but there's gonna be some sacrifices you need to make. There could be some better ways you could equip it and outfit it if you want to minimize your cost, but it is not gonna be the most efficient tool. So in that video, we talk about some of the negatives to that as well, which are gonna be potential damage to the surface that you're plowing. Buckets are made to dig in, right? So if you're plowing your driveway, the same thing could accidentally happen. Happen. you could dig in whether that's gravel if it's concrete if it's asphalt whatever it is and cause some unintended damage you could also prematurely wear the corners of your bucket if you don't have a cutting edge on there so just some other considerations to think about not to mention the inefficiency of having to raise lower shake it out reset and reposition now a few options if you are adamant on using your bucket to push snow Look into getting an additional cutting edge on there. We sell UHMW, it's like a hard plastic, or you might hear it called a poly, Tyvar, it has some other kind of trademark names that it goes by too. But if you have a paved surface or a concrete driveway that's gonna keep the steel off of the driveway, put a protective layer in between there that will protect your bucket and it will protect your driveway. It'll still scrape really well, get all that packed snow off of there. But some buckets are gonna come pre-drilled. You can see this bucket actually has a cutting edge bolted onto it right now. Others, you are gonna have to actually go in and drill it out and then bolt on your cutting edge. Now doing that's gonna give you a nice clean scraping edge all the way across, but another option to consider maybe even a little bit cheaper too, is gonna to be something called an R2 manufacturing edge tamer, all right? So if you Google edge tamer, we don't sell them, but if you wanna look that up, you can buy them right from their website and you just kinda of clamp them on. They're like little skis or like little skid shoes that you put two or three or four right on your bucket edge. It's gonna get it off the ground. And the whole principle behind that is to prevent damage to your bucket and the plowing surface. All right, so recently I did a video kind of giving a sneak peek at some future videos coming up where I'm gonna compare a rear blade to a box blade to a land plane and the pros and the cons, you know, strengths and weaknesses of all of those. And so I asked for opinions, right? I wanted some feedback on um, where folks prefer to use a rear blade over those other attachments because for me, a rear blade is gonna be probably at the bottom of the pile compared to those other attachments. But the one place where the rear blade does excel and those folks mentioned it as well is gonna be for moving snow. So you might hear these called grader blades or road blades or just rear blades or flat blades. They go by a lot of names, but they're gonna be one of the cheapest tools that you can get. And so you can use these not only for grading out your driveway or maybe doing some landscaping jobs with them as well. So one of the things that's often overlooked on a rear blade is gonna be the fact that you wanna make sure you get something wider than your tractor, at least a foot wider, because if you are angling that quite a bit, you could knock off as much as a foot of width, depending on what it is. And the last thing you want is to not cover your tracks when you're plowing or pushing snow. But with a blade like this, you could pull forward with it. You could also reverse it around and push backwards if you wanted to. So you have the ability, you have a, a pin here you can take out and just kind of swing it around in different arcs and angles. Now, so the blades that we sell are from Dirt Dog. They're manufactured down in Georgia. They're a very high quality blade. They're gonna have several different series, different color options and things like that. These are gonna be quick hitch compatible. The bigger ones are gonna have a built-in part parking stand as well. And you'll even have some hydraulic options. I got an eight foot blade uh, with some hydraulic options that I still have to get set up and play around with it and try it out. I'm looking forward to that. But if you're looking for a pretty cheap option to move some snow and then maybe move some dirt as well, 
I'd encourage you to check out a rear blade. Now a three point hitch isn't the only place you can use a blade to plow snow. You can put them on the front end of your tractor as well. There's a couple of different options there. What you see stacked up behind us are gonna be loader mounted plow blades, all right? So if you have a loader with a quick attach bucket on it, primarily a skid steer quick attach or a John Deere quick attach when just a, a couple of pins or levers release the bucket off of there, then you can put on a plow blade in its place and have it right up front. Now there's gonna be another version of a plow blade yet and something I don't sell. I'm not a John Deere dealer, I'm not a Kubota dealer, but if you get it from your OEM dealer, you can get a frame mounted blade. So you can take your front end loader completely off and put a plow blade that attaches to some version of a quick hitch so you can hydraulically angle it and raise it up and down. Typically, you'll control that with a loader joystick that you have on your tractor. You kind of plug into those hydraulics and operate it that way. I know I've got some footage of me using one, something in a similar setup on a John Deere garden tractor. So we'll throw some B-roll up of that so you can see what we're talking about. But you have three different options of blades that you can use between mounted on the loader, the front frame of the tractor, or the three-point hitch. So no matter which blade you look at, you're going to be able to typically get a steel edge, a rubber edge. You can add on, we sell those uh, UHMW, the hard plastic strips, if you want to drill those out and add on a hard plastic edge as well. If you're trying to find the right edge to suit your application, gravel, asphalt, concrete, again we did a video all about it going in depth on what the best choice for your situation is. Without going too deep into it, there's a couple other pros and cons on these front side plow blades and the loader mounted is nice because you don't have to take your whole loader assembly off, right? So if you need to get back to a set of pallet forks or to a bucket or a grapple, basically switch between attachments a lot. It's nice to not take your whole loader off, just be able to switch out the attachment. So the downside, I think, with the loader mounted blades is it's gonna lengthen your overall setup. It's gonna put your pushing point way out in front, which can sometimes make it hard to steer and hard to operate. But if you get a frame mounted blade, that means you need to take your loader off, right? So if you do want to use a set of forks or a bucket or a grapple or something else, you have to go through the whole process of taking off the quick hitch and the plow, putting on the loader, and then flip right back to that to get back to plowing setup. One more con with a loader mounted plow blade is that you're going to have to hop off your tractor to manually angle it. You can add on a hydraulic kit if you want to, but that's going to drive the cost up. And then you also have to have the additional hydraulics already on your tractor to control that third function, right? You're gonna raise and lower your loader. You're gonna be able to rock it back or roll it forward. And then you need to also be able to angle it left or right. So that's three functions required there, which most tractor owners only have two. All right, it's time to talk about snow pushers, which are my favorite. I don't make any bones about it. It is what it is. Now remember, we're going from the cheapest to the most expensive, all right? So some of this could vary depending on what manufacturer you're looking at, uh, maybe what size equipment you have, what options you want to put on there, but this is just a general kind of look at cheapest to most expensive. All right, so a few reasons why the snow pusher is my favorite. Okay, so it does mount to the front end loader, which I love, all right? So it's right out in front of you, so good visibility. Um, I like the idea that there's no other connections that are required. There's no other hydraulic hookups to angle anything. It's just a box. You know, there's no electric that's on there. You just have a quick attach, skid steer, or John Deere quick attach, and away you go. Why I like it over a plow is the fact that that back wall, which is doing all your main pushing, is gonna sit a lot tighter to the tractor. So you're gonna have a little bit more control to steer and to manage and to have a little bit more oomph, I guess it feels like, behind the load compared to a plow where that same flat blade there is going to be sitting out another foot, maybe 18 inches, making it that much harder to control. So for me, I like simple, right? When it's freezing cold outside and something goes wrong, because things always go wrong, you want to minimize those chances. So without any moving parts, all you have on here are replaceable skid runners and edges. You know, there's nothing to really break on this piece of equipment. And a box is going to handle whatever you can throw at it. It can handle a couple inches of snow for cleanup. It can handle a foot of snow. It can handle wet, heavy snow, light, fluffy snow. It doesn't really care. The downside with, I guess, plows and pushers in general is you do have to have a place to put it, right? So you can stack. You can drive these up on piles and stack them up. But at some point, if you don't plan ahead or maybe you have a really tough scenario where you're at, you could potentially run out of room. So as far as why I choose HLA, you know, I actually, I work with a lot of manufacturers and I could, I think there's five different manufacturers that I work with where I could sell their snow pushers, and I don't sell anybody else's besides HLAs. And there's a handful of reasons for that, okay? So don't let this size fool you. They make them for subcompact tractors, for smaller compacts, for skid steers, for all sorts of shapes and sizes of machines. So you'll get the right one for you. So there's gonna be a 1500, an 1800, 2500, 3500, and 4500 series. Oh wait, and a 5500 series too. 
but they'll have the right size for you, the right width for you, but I love their design. If you take a look down here, you're gonna see there's no cross bracing. A lot of them, you're gonna have a bracket or an arm that goes across from the side plate to the back plate for structural support. It's a great place to trap snow, I can tell you that. But what you might see here is a double wall panel. You can see these weld marks here. That's a second panel for reinforcement on the inside. And you're gonna also notice that back wall is radius, all right? And so that's good for a couple of things. It helps prevent snow from sticking to it. It's gonna release a lot easier. And also, as you're moving forward, it's gonna kinda keep that snow rolling as you're going along, making it a lot easier on the tractor and the operator. Now, one of the awesome features of the HLA Pusher is gonna be this back drag. This is, I think it's 14 inches top to bottom. It's huge, okay? So if you roll this whole thing forward, then this front edge becomes your cutting edge. And so if you need to get up next to a garage door, maybe your pole barn, it could be a retaining wall, maybe you have parked cars or trailers or other equipment to just kind of pull that snow away from because you can't push it around there, a back drag is an amazing option to consider. Now for most of you subcompact and compact tractor owners, the 1500 and 1800 series are gonna have a completely enclosed top, all right? They're not nearly as big. And so this back drag here actually completely closes off this gap and there's absolutely nowhere for the snow to go. As far as I know, no other manufacturer offers an option like that. And it's one of the biggest selling points, in my opinion, of the HLA. One other cool feature that you start to see on the bigger pushers by HLA, when you have a lot of weight behind the equipment is going to be a spring trip edge so you can see the big springs on either end here so if you do hit a hidden object or maybe a hit a curb by accident or whatever it is you're going to have some give there some relief so that you're not completely destroying and demolishing whatever you hit but again that's only on the bigger pushers i do think it starts at the 3500 and on up and one of the great things i love about the hla pushers is the bolt-on features that they have so starting back here that's a bolted on frame and that's good for a couple of reasons number one if you ever got a different piece of equipment with a different connection type so this is a skid steer connection but say you got a big john deere say you got a, a managed telehandler like i have something with just a different adapter plate that's required you don't have to then go get a whole new piece of equipment you can just buy this bolt-on plate reuse the pusher and you'll also see that there's going to be some holes in this bracket up and down that allow for different mounting positions because not every loader interface is going to be set up at the same angles and so if your max roll and curl is not quite doing what you want it to do you can unbolt it reposition it bolt it back up and, and have a better setup for you. So we talked about the back drag already, but this is a bolted on feature. So if you're kind of on the fence, yes or no about needing a back drag, or maybe you don't now, but you could in the future, that's gonna be an option that you can add on. There's gonna be pre-drilled holes throughout the edge of the pusher that you can do so. And you can see some more bolts going on down here. Your skid runners, one on the right and the left end, are both gonna be bolted on so you can adjust them up and down. So if you do not wanna have your main scraping edge, scrape right along the ground, you can adjust these skid runners, just slide them down a little bit and tighten them back up. And that's gonna make your main cutting edge a little bit higher so you're not maybe knocking all your gravel off the road. And the main cutting edge is gonna be bolted on which allows you to reverse it. So if you wear down one side, you can unbolt it, rotate it around, bolt it back on and get double the life out of that. You can also replace it obviously once you wear it out. So it's not an integrated edge that you'd have to have something new welded right on. And the last place that you're gonna notice bolt holes are gonna be on the back drag, all right? And so this big hunk of steel on the end, you can see where it's welded on. This is an integrated steel cutting edge, all right? So you can use just this. If you're not gonna use the back drag a whole lot, I'd encourage you to just stick with this. However, if you have a concrete or an asphalt driveway, you're gonna have some other edge options to consider. So you could bolt on a rubber edge, you could get a piece of UHMW, that hard plastic, which a lot of folks really prefer, myself included. The point being, you can add on additional cutting edges and let's talk about those options right now. So the standard setups from HLA are gonna include steel or rubber for the main cutting edge down below here, all right? For any size pusher, doesn't matter which one and then steel skid runners, all right? If you add on a back drag, the base price is going to include this integrated steel edge, what you see right here, nothing else bolted onto it. HLA offers the option to add on an additional cutting edge to the back drag. So if you wanna put a replaceable edge on here, you can put a steel or a rubber edge for an additional cost. Now we're pretty big on a material called UHMW or a poly or a hard plastic. And the easy way to sum up that material is that it cuts like steel, 
but it protects like rubber. So it's a great solution for paved surfaces, for concrete driveways, where you really wanna scrape well, that's one of the downsides of rubber, is it doesn't scrape well at all. But steel is very abrasive and can chip and damage those more delicate surfaces a lot more easily. So we went out and sourced UHMW skid runners that are available for an upcharge, so if you want to have complete protection for your driveway, what I would do, what I would suggest is getting UHMW skid runners, get UHMW edges down here and on the back drag as well. So UHMW is not available just for snow pushers, but it's available for the snow plows that we talked about, for the buckets. It's available for the rear mounted grader blades if you want that as well. We have quite a few different sizes. We can cut it to length. We don't drill the holes out, so we're not gonna drill the holes out to match up here, but just lay it on there, mark it, use it as a template, drill it out with a multi-purpose bit. Just go to the hardware store, grab some nuts, bolts, and washers, and away you go. And it's even gonna work for this next attachment we'll tell you about now. All right, so now let's talk about the top of the heap, the creme de la creme. And this is what I know a lot of you guys love, which are snow blowers. And I do enjoy them myself. And now they make snow blowers for the back end of a tractor and for the front end. And I think the front end with a cab is just the cat's meow, but there's some limitations there. And again, for me, I use my tractor year round. I use all my equipment year round. And to slap on a front frame mounted snow blower, take your whole front end loader off of there, is just way too inconvenient for me if I need to switch back over to using the front end loader with one of those other attachments, that's just not in the cards for me. However, there are a couple of three point mounted options that you can get. You can get a traditional drive backwards type of snow blower, which is going to be the cheapest snow blower that you can get out there. It's also the worst in my opinion. You're driving backwards, which means you're you're facing this way, turning your back the whole time, trying to do some yoga positions and stretches, and it's just it's just horrible if you have to do it for any length of time. One of the really cool options I had a chance to play around with them last year is called an inverted or a pull type snowblower where it mounts on the back, but you just drive right over that snow. And yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to work well, but they do, they work well, they've been around for a long time. The folks up in Canada make these products and if anybody's gonna know how to remove snow, it's gonna be those guys. Okay, so the biggest negative to a snowblower is the price. Those things are astronomically expensive, all right? So we talked about having to take the loader off if you have a front mount, that can be a pain in the butt, but the price tag can be staggering for one of these snowblowers. Now for me, if I, if I get time, right, I'm gonna get a 97 inch snowblower, a pull type snowblower mounted on the on the Kubota here for this winter. And by the time I have all those hydraulics and the options and it's, it's configured the way that I want, it's probably gonna be somewhere in the ballpark of a $10,000 price tag. Now my inverted snowblower last year was absolutely amazing. You know, that couple with a cab, that thing feels like it's just, you can't beat it, right? So you can blow the snow wherever you want. If you have the hydraulic or the electric options on there to rotate that chute right from the cab, I mean, you just blow the snow <laughs> wherever you want to put it, it's pretty amazing. But on the flip side, you know, if you have a lot of light fluffy snow, it just kind of sprays that stuff up all over the place. It works better if you have a little mass in your snow, so to speak, not to the complete slush, but um, I don't know, they can be a pain, they can clog up at times too, so you have to deal with that. You know, if you are in a neighborhood, you gotta watch where you're blowing it because you can blow it right through the neighbor's window potentially, or potentially right onto your cameraman. I think Chris knows a thing or two about that. And they do tend to work better if you have consistently deep snows, right? So if you have just a, an inch or two that you wanna clean up, it's kind of a pain to do that with a blower. You're essentially treating it kind of like a, a pusher or a, a big box blade where you're just trapping a bunch of snow as you're driving along and then blowing it out. You're just trying to pile it up so it can accumulate and get through the chute. So if money is no object, yeah, I'm gonna get a snow blower and I'm gonna love it, right? But for most of us, we're on a budget. So you're trying to make practical decisions that can be the most versatile tool that you can use for every condition that mother nature throws at you. And most of us aren't living in areas where you're getting two, three foot of snow on a regular basis. A lot of us are getting a few inches here, maybe six, eight inches there. And so a snow pusher checks a lot of those boxes, right? It's gonna be more affordable. It's gonna be very versatile for all those different types of snowy conditions. And it's just simple, right? Not much to go wrong, not much to hook up. Just put it down and go. But no matter what tool you're looking for, we would love to earn your business. So please check out goodworkstractors.com. Check out all the options that we have available. And again, we can ship this right to you. Visit us at goodworkstractors.com. Well, hopefully you can't hear my teeth chattering, but it's time for us to get going. So again, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button down below and you know where to go. Goodworkstractors.com if you want something for your tractor. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.